embarrassing, isn't it? You didn't know what to do. Did you? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed and good evening. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Fuel. I recently uh, bought a book on statistics. I'm quite in interested in statistics, quite fascinated. And in one of these, the first thing I read was that one in every three women has long hair. <laughs> one in every 20 has red hair. And they've worked it out that one in every 60 has long red hair. <laughs> one in every thousand women is attracted to older men. One in every thousand women is attracted to Irishmen. <laughs> Which means that one in every 30 million women has long red hair and is attracted to an older Irishman. <laughs> With my luck, it'll be a bloody nun. <laughs> They're extraordinary statisticians, the figures they're going to... I was reading about the average person in this country eats 60 pounds of chocolate a year. I don't eat chocolate. So that means some greedy bastard is out there <laughs> eating 120 pounds. I read because of nicotine and carbon monoxide mixing together, drivers who smoke are four times more likely to have a crash than people who don't smoke. And what I say, keep those smokers off the road and let us drunks drive and save it. <laughs> have worked out that the average male is capable of making love in his life 5,000 times. Your eyes lit up there, madam. <laughs> She's nudging him going, what the fuck would you <laughs> For a statistic like that to be accurate, that means that they have to work under what they call laboratory conditions. So that means that they got some poor fellow, brought him into the laboratory, and he screwed himself to death. <laughs> they have electrodes all over him. Come on, off you go. <laughs> 2,000, how do you feel? Oh, all right, okay. okay. 3,560. <laughs> 4,909. <laughs> 5,000. Hello? <laughs> is that rigor mortis or another erection? What is it? Somebody, some statistician has actually worked out that the average person on an eight-hour flight on an aeroplane farts 14 <laughs> times. <laughs> That's a nice fear, 14 times on an eight-hour flight. That means you're on an aeroplane with 500 people on a jumbo jet. <laughs> that is 7,000 farts. <laughs> You're breathing farts in. You're breathing other people's farts in. You go, perhaps the fart that you fart is a fart that you've just taken in. <laughs> Getting away from statistics, I, I read recently that women who have silicon implants to the breast at high altitudes can blow up. <laughs> they can explode sitting on an aeroplane. I get on an airplane now. I won't go near anybody who's got big tits. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting beside somebody with big knockers and suddenly boom! A high velocity nipple hits your head. <laughs> Can you imagine a high jockey in the plane? High jo jockey in the plane? High jockey in the plane? <laughs> Can you imagine it? Sorry, with big tits going in to the pilot and sticking his nipple in the air? Take it to Cuba. Take us to Cuba, quickly. <laughs> the world is a lunatic. It's a lunatic place. I was reading about this liposuction. 
where you can have the fat sucked up. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you see, I mean, what they actually do, if you want fat removed from parts of your body, they make a small incision and put this tube in and turn it on and it goes <laughs> starts to suck the fat out of you. What if it went wrong? <laughs> you just watch yourself disappear. <laughs> I'm going into the tube. Facelifts. Why, what is it? Why do we need all that crap? Why can't we just grow old gracefully? Facelifts. I mean, they're how they work. They actually remove sections of skin and then pull it and knit it together again. Just keep on doing it. So if you have one, you just do that. If you have two, they take another bit and keep on going. <coughs> so you keep on just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. When I mean, you've seen people with facelifts, I mean. Uh, audience in the world, you tell them a good gag, and they go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they can't yawn, they sit beside somebody, you know how yawns are kind of, somebody yawns beside you, you feel a compulsion to yawn, somebody yawns, and they go, <laughs> imagine them having an orgasm, Lying there. Oh. Oh, yes, 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 oh, yes, good, 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 good. Imagine if they get a cold and have a sneeze. Find you. Bloody faces all over there. What's that? Medical science is extraordinary, it's kind of... When you think how advanced it is, it's... They can transplant things, they can give you new kidneys and livers and bladder and heart. The implants they can do now, they have hips and arteries and calves, I mean the whole kind of thing. And it's got to the point now, there are certain men in the world who have sexual urge, but they don't have sexual arousal. They cannot get an erection. So medical science has come to their assistance, and they have what they call penis implants. <laughs> they have objects that they place in the penis. <laughs> You're getting excited again, aren't you? See? <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of those, it's flexible, it's plastic. It's like one of those bones that used to be in your mother's corset. Do you remember the thing? <laughs> but what they actually do, they, they place it in, and there it is. So you have an erection all the time. <laughs> It's not, it's not, it's just there. I mean, you can, if you want it down, you just go, and you push it down. And if you want it up, you go, up, up, up. It's a bit like she loves me, she loves me not, she loves me. There's another one I can't believe. That you don't have an implant, you get a hypodermic syringe, and you inject a fluid into your scrotum, which brings about sexual arousal. A hypodermic syringe, sexual arousal, don't go together. Can you imagine lying in bed? I love you, darling. Oh, shit, you don't, do you? No. Please, I don't want it. Get it out. The most simple one, is actually, is what they call an inflatable one. It's an inflatable tube, which they, they place into your penis. <coughs> and it has a little valve on the base of your penis. And when you want an erection, you put a hand pump on it. <laughs> Just a little hand pump. And your dick come <laughs> It's like taking blood pressure, isn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine making love and getting a blowout? <laughs> Boom, bang! <laughs> Where's it gone? <laughs> Do 
I was educated uh, by the Carmelite nuns. The Gestapo in drag. <laughs> I went to a school uh, in a little village called Ratfarnham in County Dublin. My first day at school, this convent, long winding driveway up to it. One of those gothic doors, great studs in it. I rang the bell and opened. And there's one of these nuns, flapping. <laughs> terrifying, terrifying. Three and a half, four years of age. Terrifying. What do you want, little boy? My mummy. My mummy and daddy said, I've got to come here. Yes? Well, if you come here, you've got to be a good little boy. Will you be a good little boy? And I could see past her. And there's a fellow nailed to a cross. <laughs> I thought you're bloody right, I'll be a good little boy. <laughs> First question they ask, what do you know about God? I don't know anything about God. Who? God! <coughs> Who's God? God? You do not know who God is, sister? Sister, we have an atheist here. <laughs> Let me tell you, little boy. God is, God was, and God always will be. <laughs> what? What he is? What is that? <laughs> he is the Father, he is the Son, he is the Holy Ghost. He is three in one. Do you understand? I'm four years of age, why wouldn't I? The greatest theological question in the world, three people in one, and I'm naturally, yeah. Where is he? He is here. Well, I can't see him. That doesn't mean because you can't see him that he's not here. It doesn't. He's in the cupboard. He's not in the cupboard. God doesn't go into cupboards. He's under the stairs. He's not under the stairs. He's here with us now. He's upstairs. He's downstairs. He's outside. He's inside. He's everywhere. I think he's a big one. Why can't I see him? I'm asked, do you love him? What? Do you love him? I don't know. I've never seen him. Love him. And he wants your love. But if you do not give him your love, he will cast you into everlasting flame. What? He will cast you into everlasting flame. Have you ever burnt yourself? I didn't I burnt myself on, on the candle. What was it like? Oh, I'm very sad. sore. Can you imagine that pain all over your body? That's what will happen to you if you do not love God. What do you think of that? I love him. I love him. Then I, was, I asked, who was the fellow on the cross? Jesus. Who's Jesus? He's the son of God. I've told you. Father, the son, and Holy Ghost. He's the son of God. Oh. <laughs> he was born on Christmas Day and died on Easter. I didn't think he didn't hang around, did he? <laughs> What happened to him? He died because of you. <laughs> Christ died on the cross because of your sins. When, when was this? It was 2,000 years ago. They can't blame me. I'm only four for Christ. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> Did he have a daddy? Of course he had a daddy. I've told you he had a daddy. God was his daddy. And he had a mummy. Yes, he had a mummy. Mary was his mummy. So God was married to Mary. No, God was not married to Mary. Mary was married to Joseph. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Between my parents and the church, the brains are scrambled. <clears throat> I learned to bless myself. First time I learned to bless myself was sadly when my uncle died. And he was being buried in a kind of remote part 
the Dublin mountains, swooping down, and rain. And I'm really this big, I'm kind of wandering around between these legs and this black crowd and umbrellas and dripping rain, and this bloody hole in the ground. And oh Christ, I didn't know what it was all about. And I'm watching the coffin being lowered into the ground, and I hear the priest say what I think. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and into the hole he goes. <laughs> That's how I blessed myself for years. <laughs> the Father, Son, and into the Holy Ghost. What did you say? The Father, Son, and into the into the Holy Ghost. He goes into the Holy Ghost. He didn't go into the hole. I was there. I saw him. He went into the hole. <laughs> I eventually became a parent. When I this is kind of chronological thing. I became a parent, and one of the things as I became a parent, I, I always believed I would never really become an adult parent. I'd be a parent, but I'd, I'd understand. I'd sympathize with the younger generation. And then one day, I was looking out the window and I saw one of my children hit the other child very hard. Right in the chest. And the little one went, mm! <laughs> And all my instincts of fair play and paternal instincts came all over the, and I ran down there. And I go, what, what are you doing? What do you think? What? What did you? Shut up, you! Keep out of it! I'll deal with this! What did you do? You hit him! You hit your brother! Why? Why did you hit him? I don't like him. You don't like him! You don't like him! You don't like him, so you go around hitting people because you don't like them? I don't like you! How do you like that? How do you like, how do you like that, hey? There's one thing you learn in life. You do not go through life hitting people who are smaller than yourself. <laughs> Amazing thing. I mean, how do they depend on you in certain ways as they're growing up? You have a child of seven or eight. Hey, daddy, 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 daddy. Look at me, daddy, daddy, watch me, daddy, daddy, daddy. Come on, Daddy, help me here, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Watch me, I'm gonna dive, Daddy. Count, Daddy, Daddy. I'm a good diver, it's a good diver. How many dive? Daddy, how many points do I get for the dive? They want you to be involved with them. They're 12, 13. They're saying things like, hey, I'm worried about the examination. What do you think I should do? Do you think I should, uh, do you think I should kind of stay in and study? Or do you think I should, okay, oh, what? help me, Daddy, please help me. When you do, and you think they're sensible. They get to be 17 or 18. <laughs> You're going out? You're going out? Where are you going? Where are you going with? Put in this bloody inquisition! Do you ever watch them when they hit the fridge? They eat from the fridge. They would never go to the fridge and take food out and bring it back and eat it. They eat from the fridge. And as they eat from the fridge, you watch. Darwin's theory of evolution go into reverse. They go in. Bloody fridge! <laughs> Borrowing money, they learn to speak again. They con you with money. Can I, can I borrow a fiver? Yeah. Two weeks later, can I borrow a tenner? You owe me a fiver. Well, give me the tenner, I'll give you a fiver. <laughs> Two weeks later, can I have 20? So you owe me a tenner. So you give me the tenner, and you give me 20. 
And it, it works to the point. My son is saying to me, could I have a son at 100 quid? I said, no, you can't. You can't. I'm sick and tired of lending your money. And he says to me, I always pay you back, don't I? <laughs> There's a point where they grow up too. The girls. There's, a, there's an interesting thing between parents. Ah, fathers and sons and fathers and daughters and mothers and sons and daughters. Interesting. The, uh, the girl will bring the boy home for you to meet. And because you've kind of talked in liberal terms all your life, you have to kind of follow this through. Daddy, uh, I'd like you to meet Paul. Oh, hello, Paul. <laughs> um, can I can I bring Paul in, Daddy? Yeah, of course you can. You can say, but no, can he stay here? Yeah, of course you can. He can stay for dinner. No, no, I mean, do you mind if he stays here? What do you mean, stay here? <laughs> oh, stays in the house. Does he have a house of his own? Does he... <laughs> Why does he have to live here? Because, because I'd like him to live here. <laughs> well, where's he going to stay? He's going to stay with me. <laughs> what? <laughs> in your room? And that's it. The bastard's in. <laughs> and they take over. She loved Paul. Paul's an arsehole. <laughs> I come down in the morning. He's drinking tea out of my cup, <laughs> reading my paper, eating my food, along with the other two in the fridge. <laughs> 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 I'm only that, he's humping my daughter. <laughs> and I'm out in the garden feeding her bloody rabbit. <laughs> what should be happening, she should be feeding me and he should be out in the garden humping the rabbit. That's what it should be. <laughs> I think, uh, I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think I have to go now. I've been standing here for a very long time. I think the end of the show must have come and gone. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you for listening. You've been very nice to work to. Good night. Thank you.